Welcome to a special edition of Journey to Cares. I'm sitting here with our math consultant, Dr. Kateri Thunder. Uh, we've had the privilege to be working with her for at least a year now. And uh, she also helped to write and do a math analysis of where our curriculum is from pre-K to 12. So for those of you who do not know who Dr. Kateri Thunder is, I'd like, um, Kateri, if you don't mind just telling us a little bit about like uh, who you are and like how long have you been doing math in general and just your math career in general and then we'll talk about the work that we've been doing thus far in Burlington. Thank you. I'm so, so thrilled to get to be here. Um, I have been working in education for, I'm approaching my 25th year, which wow. is crazy to think about. Um, and I've <clears throat> luckily been able to have a multitude of roles from classroom teacher to math specialist. I got my doctorate in math education. I've worked at a university as a math methods professor. And now I work with schools and teachers all across the US and beyond, helping them create change in their math instruction and um, all of their curriculum and instruction. Yeah, because I, I remember when you were telling me that you were headed to um, Georgia, right? I thought it was the state of Georgia. You're not, you're like, no, Lisa, the country of Georgia. I'm helping <laughs> with their math curriculum. Anyhow, we're very lucky to have your expertise. And really, um, what are some of the things that when you did, some of the salient points that you found? I know that we did a review before school committee uh, that one time that you flew down here in June to work with our um, team of math teachers. What is the what are some salient themes that you found in that curriculum review? Absolutely. So over the course of the year, I met with the math curriculum review team. I got to visit classrooms. I got to hold some focus group meetings, talking with teachers, educators, um, and people just interested in what's going on in Burlington for a variety of reasons. And um, after all of that time and all of that those conversations, I found. One, the greatest thing, which is the most impressive, powerful, rich resource that everyone talks about having in Burlington are the educators. And that is so true. Every space that I went into, the relationships, the interactions were positive and um, intentional. And so building on that is really the space that I love to work. And I get to do that with Burlington is really empowering and leveraging all that brilliance. So some of the findings with the math curriculum is trying to figure out how do we make it cohesive? Mm -hmm. How do we make sure that there is an alignment from pre-K through 12? We created as a team the math curriculum belief statement yeah. to say what is it that we want for our learners when they finish Burlington Public Schools? And then how do we make that happen every step of the way from pre-K through 12th grade? And so trying to look to see how do we take that belief statement and make it actionable? How do we look and see how do we make the math curriculum at each grade level vertically aligned? How do we emphasize algebraic reasoning and geometric reasoning? How do we make sure that we are helping students be prepared to have choices across all of the amazing things you can do as a math learner and then as a person in the world who does math? Yeah, and I think what's one great thing about the work that we've been doing is that it's really focused on equity. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from an equity lens. And we're really looking at every single child, right? And um, the data that we've explored when we did, a group of us worked with you, of math teachers, representative of all pre-K all the way through 12, and some administrators worked with you online last year. And we took a look at analyzing the data to see where do our students end up at the high school. And we found out there are certain pathways that we still want to continue to grow. And I know one of the things, the pieces that we're going to be working with you over this next year is putting in an Algebra 1 course for the year 25-26, but taking a look at planning and how those next steps look. And I know that you've done some work like that, but in my work and looking at that, I know that when you start taking a look at the middle school, it has impact of what happens in the elementary school and then the high school. And so what do you think about this work thus far that we're preparing up to that point? Yeah, I think it's phenomenal that the work, the vertical <coughs> conversations, yep. the um, thoughtfulness and intentionality that each educator has brought to be a listener and a responder and sharer of how do we create this alignment. And then also thinking about how can Algebra 1 be in the middle school available, accessible for every learner, 
but also not a place where we're creating tracks where we're saying, right. you know, like, no, you can't, or yes, you can, in a way that restricts learners or holds them back, um, but also in a way that extends learning for all learners. So how do we create this open pathway to empower learners and make Algebra 1 accessible? And then what does that mean? We've had so many conversations around how do we build that algebraic reasoning mm -hmm. all the way from pre-K through the middle school so that every learner is ready to engage in algebraic reasoning at what, you know, certainly by ninth and 10th grade yeah. um, and potentially earlier. And then we've also had the conversation around geometric reasoning, right? That's How right. do we make sure that every learner can be successful with geometry by the end of 10th grade? How do we ensure that? And it's by creating that alignment, making sure that we're seeing how are kids algebraic thinkers and geometric thinkers even when they're five and six in developmentally appropriate ways. And I would say that I think one of the things like coming from an outsider, and I think you see it as well too, that just really how blessed we are to have the resources that we do. Um, and really want to thank the school committee, Dr. Conti, and also the town for all these wonderful resources from our math specialist. I would say all the way to, we have so many manipulatives, we have so many books, right? And I think one of the things we heard teachers say when we were working with them is that we have so much stuff. It's just organizing it and knowing which ones to use. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone is really um, aware of resources. They feel really rich with the resources. And now we want to empower them with the, the expertise that they already have and additional expertise to use all of those rich resources for every learner to be able to really reach that highest level of math learning. Yeah, and I think as we're starting to work with the, a solid tier one instruction, which is the core instruction of math that all learners need to be able to know and to do, I think what I've really enjoyed, especially in the summer work that we've done thus far, is that hearing all the conversations, like um, the teachers all the way from pre-K, when they're talking about, okay, this is a pre-K and this is a K standard, to even our fifth grade teachers, to some of our eighth grade teachers, and also our instructional coaches, it's just been a very exciting time, right? in which they're asking you questions about, okay, these are the power standards, you know, how do, how do we make this work all the way from pre-K through 12, for instance? And I know that there's a lot of good work, and we're using the framework of understanding by design, and I think that's gonna set up us nicely for um, the UDL work, which is the access work um, for learning for all students, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been so impressed with the listening, the responsiveness, the sharing, and the unification that I think has happened through the vertical conversations. To be able mm. to say, here's what I'm having a hard time with. Oh, me too. Um, you know, here's what I'm not sure about. And kind of supporting each other and saying, we all have really great things that we bring to teaching. And sometimes we're just in our little classroom, you know, just our grade. And we don't get to share that. And we don't get to rely on each other. So figuring out not just ways to make sure that we're collaborating and connecting across a grade and across a school, but also across the whole division. And that can only benefit every learner, right? Like that, just knowing, well, I understand how to do a variety yeah. of things with differentiation or UDL. And oh, I understand a lot with manipulatives. When we come together and share it, you know, we have twice as much brilliant, but brilliance between us. And, and, and please forgive me and forgive the audience and forgive me for sometimes I get uh, anachronisms and I'm so used to them. Can you explain a little bit about what UDL is? What, what does it stand for, first of all, and why is it important? Absolutely. So UDL stands for Universal Design for Learning. And it, I think, originally or primarily was used in special education to help make sure that kids had a variety of ways to express, represent, and engage in learning. Mm -hmm. But really, it's kind of the heart of all learning for all learners, including right. students with special needs, including English learners, and then including all of us. And making sure that when we look at math, we're saying, well, we're going to maintain high expectations, the high expectations of second grade or sixth grade or geometry. But we're going to make sure that we allow for and support and celebrate and value multiple ways to engage, multiple ways to represent all of the great things mm. that we know mathematically and multiple ways to express the mathematical learning that we have. And so much of that takes learning as an educator of what are the options? What, what would really show that or what would connect with a learner? Um, what really still maintains a high expectation but also connects with each individual student is so we need to build that expertise amongst our educators. And I really appreciate that you're bringing the expertise of Jay McTie 
um, with Wiggins and Titan Understanding by Design to our, to our teachers and that, you know, we're slowly working on this. Like he says, what, think big, but start small and be creative and, and focus on the wins. And I know that tomorrow we're going to be meeting with our administrators, um, representative of each school, to really share a lot of the work that we've already done with the teachers to talk about how do we begin to roll this out slowly uh, for all math teachers to at least take a look at the framework. What is understanding by design? Um, how do we help embellish already the good work that we do? And so this is um, exciting times. And also what's planned, which I think is very exciting, is that we're going to be working again with you um, during the school year, a group of us, and we'll be taking a look at Algebra 1, for instance. We'll be taking a look at some of our math textbooks, especially at the, at the middle school, because they're up for a new textbook adoption. And just a lot of good stuff that's just really exciting. And I, I also heard in the conversations today about uh, places that we also need to go about making more consistency when it comes to grading, taking a look at our assessments. But I would say that right now we're laying down the foundations, but this work has to be very strategic. Um, it has to be done in a way that's not too quick, so it's not being put on uh, too quickly for staff. And so that I also heard as one of the success criteria that we also need to do it in a way so that teachers own it, so it's not, mm -hmm. not just another initiative. So what do, you, what do you think are some, those are our success criteria, and what are your thoughts about that? I was so impressed that, that not <clears throat> only was it around, let's make sure that this is work that is part of just the mindset of being an educator in Burlington Public Schools, but it was also, let's make sure um, knowing what we're learning, knowing how to um, have that end in mind and check in where am I in relationship to that mastery and be able to adjust my learning was something that every educator wanted learners to own. That as they grow in their learning that they can just, you know, own the learning each step of the way and not only expect to be empowered as learners and to own it, but also to advocate and say, hey, I really want to know what, what are we learning about today? You know, I really want to be able to check in on my, my metacognition and know and monitor my learning to know if I'm really making progress. So I also really appreciated that the team mm. constantly thought in a um, strength-based, asset-based stance about learners and about teachers, constantly looking to see how does this connect with something that we're already doing? That's right. How does this connect with something that learners already you know, just as being gr the great kids and people that they are, how does this build on their strengths and how does this build on the strengths of Burlington educators already as opposed to being something new? No, it's just something to enhance, right? It's something to make universal across our teaching staff to make sure that we are all always thinking about, well, where are we headed and how do we get there? And I, I completely agree. This group of teachers that we've been working with during the summer have been absolutely fantastic and they're so quick and they're like oh my goodness this is gonna a framework that can be used for all disciplines and yes <laughs> yeah. you're absolutely correct this is a great framework and we're slowly building it and we're taking a look at where our students are understanding that not a child is a one-size-fits model right? right and I think one of the things that we've also t are starting to take a look at is to ensure that all students have high qualities of uh, curriculum instruction and assessment and that really goes back to eventually, I think, where we're going to head, you know, once we get this put into, we also are going to be working with you the following year. And that's going to be taking a look at multi-tier systems of support to ensure that there is fluidity of how we um, group our students to ensure that, that our students receive the interventions that they do need to receive. These are students who are not meeting grade level and those who are above and extending what those extension activities are going to look like. That's very exciting. That's going to be coming down the pipeline. I also know that uh, this coming up here, you'll be also working with our math specialists. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? Because this is, again, building the educator capacity. Tell me about what you'll be doing with them. Yeah, overwhelmingly when I <clears throat> met with the math specialists, they wanted to know how to be really effective coaches. Mm. You know, they, they had been in classrooms themselves as classroom teachers. They'd been, you know, trying out this role of coach and trying to support teachers to really, you know, try new practices, become efficient and effective in those impactful strategies. They wanted to know how, how do we do this? So 
um, that's what our work will be this year. We're going to be meeting each month for about three hours, and we're going to really dive into what is effective tier one math instruction yep. and um, how do you help teachers, you know, bolster that knowledge through the coaching model. So we're going to kind of intersect those two so that they feel like, yes, I know what are impactful mm -hmm. strategies, things that we want to make sure every child gets to experience in their tier one math instruction, and then how can they help teachers practice those strategies, learn about those strategies, refine those strategies, and actually put them in place and have the impact that we want for learners. Yeah, and that's just very exciting because I think that when we start building our educator capacity, it's not just sitting with a group of people, but we're being able to spread that knowledge to others. And I know that that's something that the math specialists have, have wanted. So. What have you found to be very exciting, just on a more personal note, with your time here in Burlington oh, that you liked? Thank you. Oh, yeah, you, you got to hold the alligator. I did. I got to hold the alligator. I loved that. Luckily, the alligator is small, but a little bit hissing while I was holding them. <laughs> I got to um, have lunch at Prest. That was amazing. I drank a, a lovely peach tonic that tasted exactly like I was sitting in a peach orchard. Um, I've gotten to have tour, a tour of Burlington, several tours, and it's just beautiful here. Everyone I've met has been so welcoming and exciting, and I'm so impressed constantly with the educators and how they, they are so passionate about being there for kids and families and sharing with each other. That was actually the moment today that we ended on, several teachers talking about how do we take this risk of trying something new ourselves and then showcase it. How do we show it to other teachers authentically and say, you know, here's what went well, here's what I tried, here's what didn't go so well, here's how I'm gonna adjust it. So just, you know, the whole community is so impressive and to have, a, you know, these educators who are willing to try and to be, you know, uh, transparent and vulnerable with what they're trying and how they're trying to improve their craft is really, an impressive thing. Yeah, I feel very blessed to be here. Mm -hmm. And um, also, just thank you for being here because I know that uh, you don't like to brag um, that much about you, but we're very lucky to have Dr. Thunder with us. She's a published author. She's a researcher. She's worked at the university level. Um, she is the keynote speaker for many states. And just so to have her time and her knowledge base, and she's personable, and I think that when the teachers and the administrators have met with her, she brings a wealth of knowledge, and she's going to be helping to move our math curriculum to the next level. So thank you so much, because you could be anywhere else in the United States or even in another country, but thank you for taking the time to work with us here in Burlington and helping us move to the next level. It is such a gift, so thank you for having me. We just wanted to say thank you, and thank you for joining us for a special edition of Journey to Cares with Dr. Chen and Dr. Kateri Thunder. We hope that you have a wonderful afternoon.